You know what I'm saying? That's my big brother. And I learned sign language, and that has taken me so many places. And I'm, I'm doing a book called I Learned to Hear Through a Deaf Man's Ears. Wow. That's, that's what, what made me such book. a cold songwriter and producer. Because he could only hear Michael Jackson through putting the, putting the, the, the boom box to yeah. his face yeah, that's and right. letting it go through his jaw that's right. to his brain. Because the ear is dead, it's vestigial at that point, it ain't working. So the, the bone, the skull has to be his ear. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E-He, the reason you see me. All the way up to Kanye got wounded in that accident. And then that took me out to L.A. Yeah. To be around him. Mm -hmm. To be more present as a protector. And as a, you know, financier, you know, and all these different things that come with being a big brother. I grew up with little brothers, you know what I'm saying? And my big brother was deaf, so he was a little bit like a little brother to me, too. Had somebody I had to take care of. Yeah. He was deaf, and... Um, People take advantage of a deaf kid in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That's real. But luckily, he was the toughest nigga in the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, he's a lefty. He can knock anybody out. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He can run faster well, the than anybody the else. is even stronger. No question. That. He could do all the flips in the world. He can get <laughs> straight A's. He could play baseball, football, volleyball, basketball. He could jump. He could run. Wow. You know. Yeah. So he didn't need that kind of physical protection, but he needed the protection from people emotionally tormenting him. That's right. Making fun of him. And he said, "Malik, what they say? What they say?" If I tell them they said something bad, then he getting their shit. It's you know what I'm saying? Oh, fully. I know. <laughs> One thing my daddy told me when I was real little, I was like four, maybe five, and I was staying with my grandma. And when my brother came to play with me, he was two years older than me, he was seven. And the big kids who I really loved, the like teenager kids that used to let me be their little mascot, they ostracized him and, and kind of like made fun of him and abused him and he was crying because they was bigger than him and they was bullying him. And my father asked what happened and um, I didn't really know what to say. Cause I seen it happening, not really having the vocabulary. My father said, man, don't you ever let nobody take advantage of or harm your brother. That's real. You, you stand with him and ever since then. It's been up. Ever since then. Man. Never, 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 never that I abandoned him in any way. You know what I'm saying? That's my big brother. And I learned sign language and that has taken me so many places. And I'm, I'm doing a book called I Learned to Hear Through a Deaf Man's Ears. Wow. Mm. That's, That's what made me such book. a cold songwriter and mm. producer. Cause he could only hear Michael Jackson through putting the putting the the, the boom box to yeah. his face yeah, and right. letting it go through his jaw. That's right. To his brain. Cause the ear is dead, it's vestigial at that point, it ain't working. So the the bone, the skull has to be his ear. The vibrations. Mm -hmm. And I see how he, the rhythm in which he moved. He's like, what, they, what he saying? So I would tell him the lyrics, then we got the tape. Cause he was here on the radio, we would tape it from the radio. But when we got the real tape, it got the words in there. So he could read along and I would give him the cadence. Wow. On that. And boom, Gram eight Grammys. Wow, <laughs> that's hard, man. So, <laughs> I mean, you, this music thing, man, like, like, when you, you, and I'm gonna go back, cause you mm -hmm. went to LA after Kanye's West, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Rick, and mm -hmm. you stayed with him how long, until he gotten better? Uh, until he got better, and until, basically, I stayed with him until the springtime, till it was time for his album to come out. Till it was time for, well, I, I had to go back to Chicago, I was still in the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to go back to my hustle, but I came out with 500. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. I came out to LA with 500, that's what he said he needed. And you know the camera that they shot the um, the documentary, the Genius, yeah, not, Kanye yeah. West Genius documentary. I bought that camera. That's all. That's all. Because Kanye didn't want to use a stolen camera. He yeah. didn't want the energy of a stolen camera. You know. So I was like, let's buy a new camera. How much is the new camera? You know what I'm saying? This is back in the days when cameras was, you know, it was expensive. Five thousand dollars. That's right. That's right. <laughs> For a regular ass shooting camera, nigga, they didn't have no bells and whistles and shit. But I grew up with Cootie. Okay. You know, I grew up with Cootie and I put Cootie in a lot of positions to win, put him into positions to get money, you know, the whole nine. And I, you know, Cootie was, I, 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 I um, credit Cootie with <laughs> one of the people that gave me the courage to leave the street. I kept trying to leave the street for years, from like 94 until 2005 when I finally left. I, it took me like 11 years to leave the street mm -hmm. officially. Wow. So I would leave and then I would go broke. So, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, now. Back. Then go right the fuck you back. One to, time I had to go, to go to my little brother's house, Omar. He's on 115. He asked me for some money for his rent or something, pay something. And I say, man, okay. I said, bro, I got to go back to these streets, G. I said, we mm -hmm. prayed together. 
Mm-hmm. And my brother, we prayed in his basement. So I had to go back to the street. That was the one mm-hmm. last time. And we prayed. And I was like, man, I don't know how I'm going to make it because I knew niggas was telling and <sighs> all that. And we prayed our way through it. And I'm blessed. I never had to tell on nobody. What year was this? That was 2004. I left the streets in 2005. Mm-hmm. Wow. I went and we had a deep prayer, man. You know what I'm saying? So I do credit my brother with that. You know what I'm saying? He ain't never been a fan of me type shit. You know, I'm like, he ain't, you know, he's always had art in his heart. I mean, there's some guilt there. There's some, you know, some pain yeah, from right. his mama. He loved his mama. She was good to him. I understand that. I don't love his mama. Our mother, I don't love her. And it's okay not to love her. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's okay. I don't hate her, but I don't have the love for her that you would think that you would need to have for the maternal unit that put you into the world because she was an antagonist, a constant antagonist, an enemy to me, an oppressor right. to me. And by him wanting to take up for her, it it put a it puts a rift between he and I. Right. Which is fine. He grown. And um I'm just a person that's like, cool, nigga, that's who you love, love her. That's fine. But no. you can't love her in. Well, at the, at the end of the day, I just feel like, and I never put nothing in a box because everything's always evolving. It's always evolving. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So every situation, I don't take it to heart because I know yeah, already as as, as as God do his thing, everything going to roll out. No question. You know what I'm saying? But you got to be patient. And without faith, you can't have patience. Without yeah. patience, you can't have I faith. Think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? You got to have both. Come on so now. at the end of the day, I'm able to work with everybody when it comes down to thinking that way. Talk, boss. And you know what I'm saying? So that's the, the, that's the only way to deal with people that you love mm-hmm. and not detach yourself from them. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've proven my love to everybody. They've not proven their love to me. I get it. I you know what I'm saying? And it's that time. Yeah, mm-hmm. but and now, it, now it's the harvest. Now it's the harvest time. Let me harvest what you planted. Y'all been harvesting what I planted. Yeah. You but, know, y'all ain't but, never went without. Y'all, but y'all bombed out of jail. Y'all got y'all kids fed. Y'all got y'all rent paid. Now I got to move to a new season because I can't have God being like, uh-uh. No, no, I no. told you, leave that alone. You already done enough. You done that. Yeah. Let them do for you. If they don't do it, they just don't do it. I'm not mad. No, but at the end of the day, you know, even on Spider-Man, he said. Uh, to who much is given, much is required. And I did all. Power comes great. Great responsibility. There you go. So you already know what will come with leadership. No so question. at the end of the day, you are that one. Mm-hmm. And there ain't no way to get off around that. No way. Go ahead. Okay. I got a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, earlier you said you went to prison. Um, what was the, How old were you the first time whenever you got in trouble? I, didn't, I never went to prison. I've been in jail. jail. And I went to um, Illinois Youth, uh, how old how were I you? see. Uh, the first like, time. First time I got arrested, I think I was 13, 13. 14. And I heard you mention that you've been in jail 28 times? No, I've had 82 arrests. 82 arrests. Mm-hmm. So how many of that end up being in jail? Uh, only like four or five times. Maybe. So, oh, so you lucky. Yeah. Lawyers, man. Blessed. Now lawyers. Yeah. yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E. He the reason you see me.